Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hal. Uh, welcome to Da Nang. You might be noticing we're in a very different setting from our studio. We have an amazing, beautiful background. I wish this was our normal background. We're here at the Shilla Monogram. It's a hotel started by Shilla, a group based in Korea. It's their first ever property outside of Korea and first in Vietnam. Uh, today, we're here with the general manager of the property, Kareem. Uh, Kareem, he's been here just for a few months but has a long history here in Vietnam and around the world in hospitality. Um, welcome to the show. Great. Thank you, Hao. Thank you for having me today. Yes, it's wonderful to have you uh, here with us and for us to be here. Thank you for your team's hospitality. We just want to start off with maybe a quick introduction of who you are and uh, what you're doing here in Vietnam. We'd love to hear about your background. Certainly. Uh... I'm Karim Mezian. I'm the general manager of the Shila Monogram. Just arrived uh, two months ago now. Mm. I'm back in Da Nang. I'm working now for 20 years in this industry. I've been working uh, around, around the world, different country as um, Australia, French Polynesia, Thailand, uh, USA, uh, Europe, Qatar, and I finally arrived in Da Nang uh, nice. nine years ago. And I, I've been working as well in Fukuok, so that's why I'm back now in Da Nang uh, after five years uh, working in Fukuok. You, you listed a lot of countries, but you look very young. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been in the industry, Kareem? I've been 20 years now. Wow. That's why I started really early. Okay. I mean, I knew, I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. So um, in school, I went straight to, uh, as soon as I could, okay. I went straight to the hospitality school uh, okay. of Paris. And that's where I start with. Um, so a lot of young people these days, sorry, just a side question, because a lot of our audience are young people looking to be inspired by their work and get inspiration from people like you. Mm -hmm. How does one stay in the career and in industry for so long? What keeps you everyday motivated to learn more and be a better version of yourself in this industry? I would say that every day is something different, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I love about the hospitality, you okay. know. Um, and obviously, you know, moving around was also good, mm -hmm. you know, uh, discovering the different culture, different mm -hmm. country, a uh, different way to work. But uh, I would say even when you're in a hotel mm -hmm. or in the hospitality industry, every day is something different. It's a different day. Your hotel uh, feel different every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, you associate a different every day mm -hmm. in a way, you know, so it is an industry that's moving. It's yeah. something that's moving. So I like something moving. And I do believe when you have the thing inside, when you have the patient, you, you, you will stay with the hospitality. Yeah. You know? Okay, very good. Let's talk about this property. So Shilla, for those of you that don't know, it's a very new brand here in Vietnam, just opened one or two years ago, I believe. Yes. Um, it's a brand that was started in Korea. Um, is partly owned by Samsung Group, I believe, and uh, they have a long history in Vietnam. They, in fact, represent a very large share of manufacturing and innovation in Vietnam in terms of uh, what they produce. Uh, what does the Shilla brand represent? What would you say? As a newcomer as well, yeah, right. you've had to study the brand. <laughs> sure. I'm sure the last two months you still are studying the brand, living the brand. Sure. If you could share about that. Yes, I would say, um, you know, a few days ago we were proud Mm. to have an event for South Korean National Day mm. and we had uh, the presence of His uh, Excellency, the General Consul mm. of Korea mm. and uh, the Chairman of the province. It was, it was good to, uh, to hear again the tight relation between Vietnam and, and South Korea mm. and all the, the, um, the partnership that they have. And it's true that Shila, for example, Samsung in a sense, you, you just remind uh, the, the strong presence of Samsung in Vietnam. It's just continued, uh, you know, strong partnership. Shila is a well-known brand in, in, in South Korea with really two iconic hotels, mm. which are the, um, the, the Shila Sehul and the, the Shila uh, Jeju. And strong from those properties and the reputation, because they're very strong uh, reputation, Shila has uh, decided to develop uh, their hospitality uh, company mm. uh, by creating a new brand, which is a Shila Monogram. Mm. And they have, shoes, they have shoes in Vietnam and Da Nang to be the first property mm. outside of South Korea and the first Shila Monogram. So uh, it was really important for them and, and we're really happy and proud uh, being here in Vietnam to have this brand. It is a touch, is a, is, is a South Korean flair mm. without being South Korean only. Mm. Uh, it's really international brand. Mm -hmm. Our leitmotiv here is uh, where the Shila heritage meet the local flavor. So it's really a blend of the local uh, flavor and the local touch uh, with a small flair of the Shila Hotel. Thank you for sharing that, Kareem, and uh, the, the monogram brands new here in Vietnam as well. 
And for those of you that don't know, even though it's the first and only outside of Korea, the expansion plan is huge. It's, it's in San Jose, California, where there's rich heritage of innovation and connection to Korea. There will be properties in Guam, in China, uh, the Philippines, Bali, Indonesia, I'm probably missing a few. And that really tells you about um, the ambition of the brand, where it wants to be and where the Koreans' uh, culture feels very close to. Maybe you can share just a tad bit about that expansion as well and how you feel to be part of that. Yeah, certainly. I mean, they, 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 really, they, they really aim to, to, to develop themselves. Mm. Uh, as you mentioned, few properties are going to open. If you go on our website, you will see the development plan that they have. What is interesting is that um, they, they are not developing to develop, so it's really, they are really picky with who they work. So the property that they're really looking to open and w with a partner, you know, with, uh, with some owner, because they will all be under uh, contract, contract management, yeah. management contract, sorry. They are really picking with who they are working with and, and, and really for, for the good of the brand. So they're really looking, they're aiming to expand, but, you know, on, on, on the reasonable pace that will not affect the brand standard and the brand value. Being part, you know, I just joined Chile and being part of a, of a group where there is a, a big expansion uh, with a small um, amount of hotels so far. I will say I'm very, very proud, very happy. Okay. Uh, and really looking forward to, to, to be part of this uh, adventure with, uh, with Chile. Awesome. And if you're wondering, guys, uh, it's the first and only in Vietnam right now, but they will be opening another one in Hanoi in a few years time. So look out for that for those of you based here in Vietnam and looking to travel in Vietnam as well. Let's talk about Da Nang a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of new properties opening. It's one of the major destinations around the world, you can say, for leisure travel. And every time I come here, I see the airports are crowded. There's new construction happening all the time. I'm sure thousands of keys being opened every month, sure. every, every yeah, year. Yeah. I'm not really quite sure. Um, how does Shilla see itself in setting apart from the competition in the context of this really rapid growth? I mean, Chila Monogram is one of the latest uh, addition mm. in the, the five-star luxury hotels and resort mm. beachfront in, in Da Nang. So uh, our product is kind of, is, is new, definitely mm. new. And obviously we stand out, I would say we stand out compared to the other, uh, you know, we're offering the, the, the really contemporary lifestyle hotel and the, the design itself, everything, all the hotel has been uh, uh, told from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 um, the hotel has been told by Sheila itself, development team, design team with Tancon Group, uh, really famous also in Vietnam, okay. uh, who uh, really, really um, spend time and spend money to, to really reflect the, 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 um, the idea of the design team uh, to the hotel itself. Uh, the design, the, the artist that we are working with, Mr. Uh, Hanman Tang, uh, he put his, uh, his, his flair also mm. to the hotel. So every single thing has been turned really carefully. This one has been, is it really take the time to really think through all aspects of, of the hotel. Mm. And I would say that you can feel when you arrive in the hotel, mm -hmm. when you stay there, when you experience the hotel, you can feel it. And that's what our guest uh, is mentioning to us. So on this part, I would say it has, it has been successful. Okay, very good. I mean, it's all those little touches in a hotel that make the difference. And mm. you know, as a side note, I, I saw Kareem at the breakfast hall yesterday morning. I, on his day off, and he was gracious enough to say hi and take his time out of his day off. Um, and I was, I was here with a friend of mine who's a prominent restaurateur, mm. and he mentioned one of the key details that he loves about this hotel. It's one of the few or maybe the only hotel in Da Nang to have warmed, heated pools. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've yet to experience that in Vietnam, so anyways, I'll try it out this afternoon perhaps. <laughs> Um, all those little details add up. Let's talk about the, the, the local culture a little bit. Um, Korean brand, obviously, and when I do walk in, I feel that style, that uh, quality uh, really come out. Um, you mentioned you've worked with local artists as well, though. How involved were you in thinking about that local integration, aside from the artists, but perhaps the service, the people? Uh, were there any other elements that uh, were considered when opening the property? Well, I would say the, the first thing, actually, uh, is the associate. Mm. You now in Vietnam, uh, the, the warm, genuine mm. uh, welcome from, uh, from Vietnamese mm. uh, hospitality, I would say that's the first thing. Mm. So you have already, uh, we, we have one of the, uh, the asset is already the associate. Mm. Uh, after it's really about the touch, as you mentioned, is about the heart, uh, is about the food and beverage, you know, we're so really well known for our food and beverage. Here, you know, uh, we offer the, the Vietnamese dishes, uh, we have to make sure something that um, is very important 
uh, for us is uh, we're offering Vietnamese dishes. It has to be the typical Vietnamese mm. uh, recipe. Mm. Uh, if we have the pho, it should come from Hanoi. Yeah. We, not, we don't want to do the pho from Central. Mm. We don't want to do the pho for uh, international guests. It mm. has to be the one from Hanoi, same mm. for the bún cha. Mm. So we, we have to respect, you know, all the, the, those uh, the, the, those key elements. Yeah, I mean, it's the people, you know, the, the food and beverage. Ob obviously, the activity that we offer, you know, mm. everything that we offer in terms of packages and things like that, we try to incorporate the cultural things. So, mm. you know, uh, we bring people to to the Marble Mountain, we bring people to the Cham Museum, you know, all this fine. We try to also uh, bring those elements to mm. our offers because the people come here to discover, actually, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnam, central Vietnam for the international guests. When we do Thing we incorporate, we try to incorporate all those things as well. You talk about the associates, you mean mm. the, the people, the yes. staff. Yes. Uh, you mentioned just offline before this that you have enough staff to run at 100% occupancy today. Right. You're, you're projecting huge growth, which is, which is wonderful. With that said, the industry in the last couple of years has taken a lot of steps back uh, because of COVID primarily. Right. And how have you guys overcome that? Because you opened during COVID as well. Yes. What was right. it like managing that process? and? How do you see, from your per, your perspective, uh, the industry responding to that? So actually, you know, we have the, as you mentioned, we have the major crisis, mm. uh, which is the, the, the COVID pandemic. Didn't have any precedent, you know, it's been new for everybody. Mm. Uh, obviously, uh, the, our industry has been aided probably one of the most aided one. Now we overcome that, I mean, it's finished. Uh, but I uh, must be honest, the, 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 the challenges uh, and still remain was really the, the manpower mm. to really find the people. It was already difficult actually before COVID because the development, tourism development in Vietnam has been huge the, the last 15 years. And to answer the demand of, of the manpower was already a challenge. Yep. Then the pandemic arrived and many people actually who have been through the industry has decided to leave the industry. Mm. Uh, and then when COVID was finished, they never came back. They went through different fields. So, uh, it was already a challenge and then the pandemic had another challenge. That is why like, it's really important to, to have your core of associate. Mm. You know, when we're running 100% occupancy, when it's a high season, which is, you know, a high season in the name, June, July, August, we need to have the people. Mm. And then uh, we balance through the year. We, have, we, we hire people and uh, they're all in full time through the entire year. Mm. We're spending time, uh, we're spending money to develop them, which is, uh, is very important as well. Mm. Uh, the ongoing training, you know, all this kind of thing that uh, we are doing. It's still a challenge to recruit. Uh, I would say I arrived in a hotel very lucky with uh, the entire manning was here, the entire managers were there. Uh, so I was pr pretty happy, but I know it's really complicated in the market mm. to really find the right people uh, and actually to fill all your positions. So, mm. Uh, we have to look after them. You know, the, the associate has uh, probably the biggest asset that we, that we have in the hotel. So... And, and the second most important asset is the customers. And then the customers. Let's talk about that too, because right. here at Chilla, when I arrived, I noticed there was a very uh, clear difference with other hotels, perhaps because the brand was so strong from Korea. Mm. Here, I, I don't know the exact number, but a large majority are Korean guests. We have Vietnamese guests. We have some overseas guests. Let's talk about the makeup. How, how, how do you guys attract the kind of guests that you do? I'd love to hear your comment on that. Yes, actually, it's, it's one of the things that we really uh, put a lot of effort. Mm. You know, as we are way, really well known for, 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 from South Korea, mm -hmm. which obviously we have a, a majority of uh, Korean uh, guests. Yep. Now, because it's a brand, it's a, it's a new hotel, we need to be known now mm. uh, through the, uh, the, other, uh, the other market. Mm -hmm. We can see an increase in different markets, so it's not only uh, South Korean, because we're not South Korean hotel only. Mm. Uh, we're really international, uh, international uh, brand mm. and international hotel. That's why we, we have to bring the people here to try to, to, to experience the brand. Mm. Uh, from uh, domestic markets is very important. For example, uh, when you see that the, for the first eight months of uh, 2000, uh, this year, the first eight months have 81 million tourists, mm. domestic tourists yeah, in Vietnam. Right. Uh, when we talk about eight million pretty much around seven, eight million on the first international. Uh, international. Yep. So the domestic is still strong in mm. Vietnam. We have also the Taiwanese market is very important. Hong Kong uh, market is important. You have Thailand that is really strong now in the day. So the thing is, we really need to work closely. We need to work hard with the travel agent, you know, all those people uh, to bring them experience the hotel. And now we see that when they come and really experience the hotel and the Shila brand, 
We have a lot of requests for collaboration and some partnership with those regional markets. But now really happy to see that uh, we, we start to be really known mm. uh, internationally and by, uh, and by the other markets. So we will see a reduce of South Korean gas here. Yeah, as a percentage. Yes. Um, you know, you mentioned Shilla, everyone in Korea knows the brand. It, it reminds me of this analogy I used to offer where, uh, let's say in Ethiopia, as an example. Yes. Uh, the airline has only bought Boeing airplanes mm. uh, historically. So actually, the local people, they don't call it airplane, they call it Boeing. So in the same way that people would say the Shilla instead of saying hotel, right. perhaps, that, yeah. that is the, the uh, essence of a brand. If a brand can really replace the word and say it with the name instead, it's like Google yeah, right, right, instead right. of searching. Right? Yeah, right, right. Um, I think that's a very powerful statement about a brand's uh, power and intent and being a household name. So I think in Vietnam, um, I can't say there's any hotel right now that I could say the name rather than the, just saying hotel, right? Not yet, um, unless it's a very, very uh, specific hotel. Metropole? Um, but, uh, yeah, oh, Iconic. that's true. And so, yeah, Hanoi, <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, and there, there's a few in Saigon as well, uh, but none that are like chains. Mm -hmm. I guess you right, right, so, right, right. Um, let's see. It'll be interesting to see how that um, comes about. How do you cater to the diverse demographic. You mentioned Taiwanese, Hong Kong, uh, Australian, Vietnamese mm. guests. Of course, the Shiller brand knows Korea super well. And, you know, I'm here and I can sense why the Korean guests love staying here. How, how do you make those adjustments over time as a brand to appeal to, the, to that base of growing forward? Or even for Vietnamese, for instance. Yes, right, um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say, uh, as I always say, that if you have the right product, mm. you have the right service, you have the right product, no matter which nationality, mm. you know, it uh, you touch yeah. everybody, mm. then obviously you have some, one part is, is, is kind of important, is you need to, to really monitor this mm. demographic change, mm. uh, to reflect it in your F&B, mm. for example, yep, you know, yep. uh, the breakfast will, you know, will be different. Mm. Um, we work, uh, I was right before in a hotel that mm. we've seen an increase in Indian, yep. for example. Okay. Uh, obviously, you need to have a, a, an Indian cuisine touch mm. in your breakfast. You need to have, in, in, you know, so we need, to, we need to monitor to, especially I would say the F&B. Mm. To be honest, the rest, uh, it, it goes, you know, if you have the right product, you keep, you know, uh, giving a good service. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking for an experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, and About Indian tourists, actually. Yes. I, I was asking our mutual friend, the mm. restaurateur, the other day, and he was saying he's getting a lot of Indian tourists now going to his restaurant. I asked him, have there been Indian restaurants opening? And he said, too many. Too There's many. so many opening right now to, to take care of that market, obviously. And I think hotels have struggled with that because most international hotels don't think of offering Indian food. Like if I were to go to uh, a restaurant, let's say, in China, um, of course, they'll have Chinese food. They'll have international food because of Western. Mm. But usually, they, they might have like an offering like Thai, for instance, a very global cuisine. But now Indian food is becoming like a really global cuisine because yes, right. a lot of people know it and a lot of Indian travelers. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see how the industry responds to that, especially here. Yes, uh, we don't have uh, uh, much Indian, but obviously yeah. something that we monitor. Mm. Uh, but it's true when you look in Da Nang, or I was in Fukuoka before, mm. And it's funny your question because that's pretty, it's a few cuisine, mm -hmm. I would say, that is like Japanese. It's mm -hmm. a very special one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way that um, we're talking about international cuisine, a chef from, you know, uh, France or mm -hmm. American or South Korean can make the food. Mm -hmm. Indian is a special cuisine, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a special skills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hotels start to have like Indian chef, yeah. but it's true that uh, you really need to be sure of the, the consistency of receiving this market in your hotel. Mm. Because obviously, like um, we're talking about business today, uh, the cost of having an Indian, Indian mm. chef is an expat, is an Indian chef coming, you know, all these things. You have to take in consideration. Mm. And I know, for instance, uh, some hotel at the beginning, uh, what they were doing, they were actually working with uh, Indian restaurant mm. uh, to cater some, uh, uh, some food wow. at the beginning, yeah. uh, because uh, obviously, again, uh, you know, Indian is a really new market mm. that we can see an increase the last few years, especially mm. last year. Mm. And, and you want to be sure that, again, you have a consistency yep. to be able to, to have, like, to offer definitely a, uh, and have a chef okay. uh, offering uh, Indian food, or it can be for any other market as Very well. Very good. Well, guys, you know, Korean brands, uh, we at a global level know Korea very well now. We, we don't think about perhaps the food as much, but you look at like K-pop, 
Yes. You look at movies, you look at uh, activities like Squid Game and Parasites, you know, they've right. really made uh, a Korean uh, brand into a global brand. Mm -hmm. And I think what you said about um, that, that's where content or a brand can really be, get to the next level. It's, it's, it has to be built in one country usually to start, mm -hmm. but if it can really become a global brand, that really transcends boundaries, yes. right? And becomes a, another evolution. So right. uh, it'll be very interesting, of course, to see uh, Shilla's goal in uh, hitting that. At least at the Korean level, there's been many successful stories. So yeah. I'm very excited to see how Shilla takes its next chapter. I'd love to hear about your community involvement, though, with Da Nang and the area. How do you guys think about that social responsibility, involving the community, getting people to come here locally? It's not just uh, a place where visitors can can come to. Uh, definitely is 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 something you need you have in your mind in everything you do. Mm. We're part of it in any, in in anything we do actually. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, we we're doing some collaboration with the schools in our area. Mm. We are doing some event with them. Uh, we are, rec you know, what is also important. We pri we try to prioritize people in our area when we do the recruitment. Mm. We have a big impact in our community, being an hotel. You know, you see this property is a beautiful one, it's a big one in this area, has an impact in everything we do. First of all, we, we're really careful of uh, our, our waste, for example, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what we do, anything about the environment, yep. uh, because it has an impact on the community. Uh, when, we, uh, when we recruit, as I was mentioning, it has an impact on the community. When you have an income coming into the community, if the community is doing well, our business will do well. Mm -hmm. We're all connected together. So again, it's a mindset. It's not only, um, I would say, a, a, a point of communication. A lot of people communicate about the CSR and thing. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it's, it's good to communicate because we need to, tell, we need to tell people what we do. We can, you know, it, it's important. But, uh, again, as I say to, to the team here, to my team, is, is something we always have to, 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 to keep in mind. Mm. When we do something, it's really about the community mm. all the time. Uh, could you share a memorable story or an instance, perhaps one that uh, has happened in the past or in the future at Shilla that you'd like to share to our audience that kind of captures what the brand is to you and your team? Uh, I would say, yeah, I just arrived two months ago, but I could see a lot of things as well. <laughs> uh, I would say I think overall we receive a lot of good feedback, yeah. uh, really a lot of good feedback. One thing that comes come a, lo a lot and, and I would say is what they are, we are strong here for is really to create an emotional connection. Mm. You know, the, the associate here, uh, when they do something, they're doing generally, they, as you say, they, you know, they remember everything from you. When you see them, all those things, you know, create a, create a connection mm. with the customer. Yep. Create a, 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 that's exactly what we want. Mm. Uh, when people come, it's not only a, a bed to sleep, a room to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to live with memories. Yep. Uh, and the only, only way to, to have those memories is really to create this emo emotional connection. Mm. I mean, we, we, we could see that it's, it's, it's through every single associate, you know, they, they, they're creating this, uh, the, the, this, this connection. And you can see it when people extending the stay, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's also a good, um, a good sign. Uh, and when we see an increase, I was talking earlier about that, is when we see an increase in uh, percentage of the, the repeater, mm. so people who are coming back, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you see an increase in this ratio, you say like, this is, we're doing it in the right direction, this is mm -hmm. good things, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're nearing the end of our podcast, Kareem. Um, I'd like for you to, to conclude with two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is if you had to give three very quick fire reasons why to come to Shilla, uh, what would they be? First of all, unique experience. Okay. I mean, it's, I know everybody say that, but I truly believe in you experience yes, yeah. that. Something unique. Um, the, the calm, mm. you know, really the calm and serenity mm. you will find here. The cultural, I mean, you come to experience a different culture as mm. well. We're talking about South, uh, South Korea and Vietnam. Yep. New product design, mm. you know. That's four. <laughs> you said three. Okay. You yeah, said I said three. three but it's okay. uh, sorry, I thought you said no, five. The, thir <laughs> the third one, actually, I really like the whole connection between uh, the Korean brand that's uh, thinking globally with mm. Vietnam. I felt that when I came in, and I think uh, for those of you that have never been to Korea but want to get a taste of it, that's not just a restaurant. Um, I, I highly encourage checking out Chilla. It's it's it is you get that sense right away yeah. and. Um, I think that also is in the people as well, not just uh, the style and the architecture mm. and design. I really do believe that. So that's four, but I'll, I'll let you say okay. the fifth if you'd like to share, Kareem. <laughs> no, um, Aside from meeting you, <laughs> I see you going. No, I, I would say customers, surprised. So. I mean, I would say the last one, so you, you'll be surprised. Mm. 
we have an amazing chef here yes. who used to work yeah. at the Sheila Sehul, yeah. who has like a Leon restaurant example with mm. two star Michelin. They have okay. a fine dining. They brought here like they, they really brought this 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 th those uh, savoir faire, mm. you know, of a South Korean. Okay. And I was really amazed by the uh, diversity of the South Korean food mm. Mm. Uh, that I didn't know. Mm. I was really focusing on the, on, the, on the South Korean barbecue, mm. which is completely different. Yeah, yeah. Is refined. Is is. I was really surprised, mm. and and actually, we, when I was talking with the people here uh, from you know Vietnam, from Australia, from France, we they, they told me exactly the same. They were amazed by the flavor, and they was amazed and surprised by the South Korean food. Okay. So just an an, exper an, an example yeah. when I say surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking in the. I, I I see a lot of the customers actually in the lobby in the cafe too. They're eating like this. Um, very South Korean local favorite. It's like an ice cream or like an ice mango bingsu. Yeah, bingsu. Right. Yes, right. Yeah. It's, um, oh, could you explain what that is? Right. Exactly? <laughs> I've I've seen it so many times. I've never tried it, but I think I will. Uh, you can find it everywhere now. It's very popular. Okay. But uh, it's um, it's a uh, it's a coconut uh, ice yeah. cream yeah. with a yeah. uh, shaved ice. Okay. Uh, with a mango. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have a piece of mango. Okay. And you have like the condensed milk on the side okay. and some beans yeah. as well. Okay. And you mix all of that together. That's a perfect example of Vietnam and South Korea because it's South it's, Korean food, but it's everything Vietnamese. And yeah. Korean. Right. So, <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Well, hopefully that's just a few reasons for you guys to check out Chilla. There's many more. Um, go check it out yourselves. Last question, uh, as you might know, our show has a lot of young people who are interested in business and building their careers and they're listening to today's podcast. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice can you offer? Um, I know you shared some of the beginning already, but to kind of close things up right. to a lot of the young people who are considering careers in hospitality, or perhaps were even the ones that have left and are thinking yes, to, come back. to come back. Maybe they're regretting it now. <laughs> they need some inspiration from you, Kareem. I would say, first of all, I mean, it's, it's a kind of industry that you, you mm. do it if, you, if you're really passionate about it, mm. if you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I go to school and talk with the students sometimes, mm. I always say that to them. Like, if you really don't feel it from the beginning, yeah. stop it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it. It's a really an industry of patience. Mm. I would say just, you know, go, go to mm. school, mm -hmm. uh, learn, you know, um, learn from your company mm -hmm. training and okay. don't be stuck in your specialties. An hotel have a different things, yep, you know, yep. you have... From F and B, you have from rooms, you have from security, you have from engineering, you have many things. Really view, don't be stuck in in in, in your specialty. Mm. Try to view all mm. uh, in the hotel, which is going to bring you a, a lot of experience and 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 bring you higher and a higher level. Okay. Don't be stuck in your specialties. Very good. I'm sure Kareem's done everything at a hotel. He's a general manager now, over 20 years. Although he looks like he's 10 years younger than he is, probably. Um, thank you so much, Kareem, for sharing thank all you that how. great insights. And again, guys, today's podcast. Remember, Shilla is a Korean brand, but it's one that's going global. And it'll be a very interesting case study to see in hospitality how man uh, Shilla manages to do it. And um, take a look for yourself. Shilla Monogram Da Nang Hotel, open now here in Da Nang in this beautiful setting. You can see it yourselves. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing more of Vietcetra's perspective on this hotel, uh, check out the other video in our description. And at the end of this video, it's called Vietcetra Spaces, where we do a, a bit of shots and uh, editorial video theme about the architecture and design of this beautiful hotel. So check out that video as well. Uh, thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Vietnam Innovators. Uh, thank you so much, Kareem. Thank you, Hal. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.